at the energy levels in the rotating frame. We always return the energy levels in the laboratory frame. And How do you calculate it? <coughs> so we must know how the field changes in the rotating frame. Right? First of all, field along z axis in the rotating frame is equal to let's write as H H R this is equal to minus gamma uh, H naught minus omega by gamma. This one is omega naught, okay, and this is uh, omega. So converting from omega naught minus omega and converting that into the field. Okay, now. Sorry? Net field. Net field. So the field in the rotating frame. H1 is not included yet here. Okay, we are only going to the rotating frame. Frequency is included, H1 is not included. Sitting in the rotating frame with the frequency omega is equal to minus gamma m across hr this is equal to and this is for the state m this is for the state m interaction energy in the rotating frame for the state m is minus gamma h cross h r. It's omega by gamma. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think I should be saying this is a rotating frame. No, and don't mix up this with that is a gamma there. And this is a rotating frame up. That's why I use this. No, it's omega by gamma, you can write that. No, 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 no. no. It's a, this is just the frequency. I am just calculating in the rotating frame. Assume that your coordinate frame is rotating. No, 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 you are sitting on the coordinate. So basically, it is the coordinate frame is rotating, you are sitting on it. How does the energy, can I represent the energy levels in that frame? How do the energy levels change? So this is just a different way of describing the energy levels when you move in that particular direction. And this you will see, this is equal to E L laboratory frame M plus M H cross omega. The first part is the laboratory frame energy <coughs> oh I I, I missed here M Yama M H cross M H cross because this is to do with the uh, no, 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 not here, sorry. This one is fine. <coughs> so this is minus gamma m h cross h naught minus omega by gamma. This is gamma here, eh? In the rotating frame. 
this again is actually a rotating frame. R, you should represent this by R. Rotating frame, but always nomenclature is always a problem. <coughs> so RF is not radio frequency here. I'm saying rotating frame. Okay. Or should I use a different symbol? to these two levels, m is equal to half and m is equal to minus half. So the same thing if I, I write, this is the, these are the levels in the, this is the laboratory frame, alpha and beta states, and the energy in the rotating frame will be, so this is the rotating frame. So this energy goes up. Sir, I think there is that gamma should not be there. Because h is the hot state. H is the hot. Where? Minus of minus of h zero minus of omega omega. Because h is equal to omega. Omega omega. Sir, extra gamma should not be there. Where is it? Extra hot. That one? No, alpha one. The gamma. Alpha one. H r is equal to yeah. But this gamma is not equal. Yeah. Negative sign also is uh -huh. <laughs> right. Okay, rest of it is correct. Minus gamma h cross, h naught minus omega by gamma. So this one is uh, fine. So then you have this minus gamma h gamma uh, h cross, h naught minus omega by gamma. This portion gives you the laboratory frame energy, and this uh, is the uh, energy coming from the rotating frame. Addition. Yeah, yeah, I 
is when I write here, the two things become confusing. I should write as RF. In the rotating plane, not radio frequency. Again, remember that, not radio frequency. Okay? Okay. Now, so this is, so as you keep increasing omega, As we keep increasing omega, a condition will reach when the two levels become equal. So that is the resonance condition. So in the resonance condition, under the resonance condition, these two energy levels are equal. So that is the resonance condition in the laboratory frame. What it means in the laboratory frame, there is no frequency of precision. Omega naught minus omega is equal to zero. Therefore, these two energy levels have become equal. This is off resonance condition when the frequency omega is different from omega naught. When the two things become equal, this keeps on increasing with omega, right? One goes up, other comes down, and you will reach a situation when the two things become equal, and that is the resonance condition. And this goes to this. <coughs> Okay. Now there is another important concept which we should introduce at this point. What else does RF do? Sir? Yeah. Uh, this thing I could not understand. It resonates both the energy states become. Yeah, resonance meaning when my frequency of motion is equal to the motion of uh, the frequency of precession, mm -hmm. then there is no field. If there is no field, there should be no energy levels. So, it comes back to your original state in the absence of the magnetic field, what is the energy level difference? So they are all degenerate. No, 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 but we are going into the rotating frame. In the rotating frame, the two energy levels are becoming equal. Okay. So, therefore, there is an interaction possible. If you are talking about the transitions in the laboratory frame. Transitions happen in the, with respect to the energy levels in the laboratory frame. So this is just a different description of how to describe the energy levels changing when you go into the rotating frame. Because these things will become useful at a later stage, we are introducing them now. Okay. Okay, now, is that it? Omega is changing. Omega is changing. I mean, this is in our control. It's our control. So therefore, I can change omega, the way I want it. So the moment I become the same frequency as the omega naught, then <coughs> energy levels are the same. Then I stop changing. You stop changing. Okay, so now, uh, is that all clear? Now there is one more important factor that happens when you reach, when you apply an RF. We said there is a tilt in the magnetization. Your equilibrium magnetization is along the z-axis, at zero field, at zero axis. Equilibrium magnetization is along the z-axis because the populations of the two states are not the same in the presence of the magnetic field. Therefore, equilibrium magnetization is along the z-axis and there is nothing in the transverse plane. Why there is nothing in the transverse plane? Because the x and the y components, they all cancel in the transverse plane because any phase is possible. Okay. So, RF, the point I am trying to drive at is RF creates the phase coherence. This is the point I am trying to explain to you. This is the punchline. Huh? 
Now this is radio frequency. <laughs> yeah, the electron field, radio frequency field. Radio frequency field creates a phase. This is the punchline. So I try to explain how it creates a phase coherence. What is the meaning of phase coherence? In the absence of this, so you had the equilibrium magnetization along the z-axis. There was nothing in the transverse plane because all was oriented in any arbitrary direction from the, in the, in the, on the cone. Therefore, the, there was cancellation, total cancellation. If, for any reason, if you create a transverse component, what does it mean? It means that some spins have come in phase. In the XY plane, there is not complete cancellation of the transverse components, which means they have come in phase. So therefore, it implies that the randomness of the phases is lost. The phases are no more random. There is a certain coordination among the phases of the different spins, and therefore it may not be 100%, but some phase coherence is created depending upon how much is the tilt from the z-axis. If the tilt is this much, you have produced a small component. If the tilt is entirely this much, you have moved everything, then it is complete phase coherence. If there is a small component, that means okay, there are some excesses in this direction compared to this direction orientation. Therefore, you have a small amount of phase coherence among the space. So some orientations are more preferred than others. That is an indication of a phase coherence. <coughs> So let me now come back to this RF here. Eh? Sir, Every time I want to understand the meaning of this phase coherence. Phase coherence. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what is phase coherence? So if I am moving together, if I am moving randomly, there is no relation between the phase. This moment, the angle to which which I move is a phase right, of a particular vector. If I move at this much, I created a phase of this much. More, more phase. So, if there is no relationship between the phases of any of the spins, then there is no relationship between them. Coherence meaning there is a definite relationship between the spins. So, if they are moving together, then okay, they are good friends. So, there is a phase coherence between them. Okay. So, if, if randomness, there is no phase coherence. So, Creation, tilting of the magnetization uh, creating <coughs> component in the Transverse plane implies creation of phase coherence among spins. Okay, magnetization gets treated when you apply radio frequency field. Now the interaction is brought in. The actual field interaction is brought in and that causes a tilt in the magnetization and that would imply there is a phase coherence created. So why are we calling this tilt in the magnetization? Because it is no longer on the z-axis. It will be no longer along the z-axis because you have <coughs> In the, in, the, in the relic frame, you saw the HR was 0, so your H1 is here. H1 is here. So the spins will have to reorient themselves with respect to this H1. The magnetization is here, net magnetization is here. This is M. 
So H1 causes, application of H1 causes a tilt in this M0 and you may find agonization going over here or something. It depends on how far you are from uh, the resonance. So that depends on the magnitude of H1. Yeah, 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 it does. It does. It does depend upon how much it will take. It may be here, it may be here, it may be here, it can be anywhere. Okay? But to whatever extent there is a tail, there is a creation of the transverse component. So once the creation of the transverse component means there is a phase coherence created to the extent it defines the transverse mechanization. So these are two important concepts. Well, absorption of energy happens when you apply the RF in the orthogonal plane, remember. What happens if you apply the H1 along the Z axis? You apply an RF along the Z axis. What happens? No, no phase coherence, yes, but will there be there is an absorption of energy? Does it cause absorption of energy? Mm. Yeah, so it does not. See, essentially what it means is that it will add a small H to the H0 field, it is a small perturbation, the energy levels keep fluctuating like this. There is no uh, there is no motion. There is no motion. There is uh, this just keeps fluctuating in the oscillating field. Therefore, H0 plus H1 plus an radial of the z-axis doesn't cause any transition. Also, you will see uh, uh, from the perturbation theory itself that, of course, in order to cause a transition from m is equal to half to m is equal to minus half, or delta m is equal to plus minus one, you need to have magnetization. You need to have the perturbation in the orthogonal plane. You need that comes from your operators, IX, IY operator is equal to, we will do that. So what there be the fluctuation, just so the energy level, yeah. that there would have been in the presence of H0, yeah. that's heating or not increase? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it is fluctuating because you are, the, the field itself value is changing. H1, H1, H1 value is changing. H1 value is changing, because it is changing like this. Yeah. It's along the Z axis. It is oscillating along the z-axis, then it cannot cause any, but its value changes up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay. So the magnitude of H0 is less than the H1? No, no, no. H0 is kilograms. So, and H1 is milligrams. Very, very small. H1 is, H1 is very small. That means the application of H1 along the z-direction is not going to create spreading too much. No, not much variation, not much variation. But you will see that such factors which will be there, they are actually important for relaxation. That's why I asked this question to you, that what happens if there is a small fluctuation in the energy levels is sufficient to cause transition by some other mechanisms. So that leads to relaxation. It leads to a change in the spin coherences and that leads to relaxation. We will show it. Yes. Uh.